Hello, my dear students. Now, in my previous video, I have taught you about the digestive system. Now, today I am going to teach you about the complete mechanism of digestion. What happens in each of the organ of the digestive system? Now, our digestive system is made up of gastrointestinal tract, liver, pancreas, and gallbladder. The, go, uh, the gastrointestinal tract is a series of hollow organs that are connected to each other from mouth to the anus. Now today we will be studying about each one of them in detail. Now first let us know why digestion is important. Digestion is important because our body needs nutrients from the food that we eat and the liquid we drink in order to stay healthy and function properly. Nutrients include carbohydrates, protein, fat, vitamins, minerals and water. Our digestive system break down and absorb the nutrient from the food and liquid we consume to use for important things like energy growth and repair of our body tissues and cell right now if you see in this diagram this is showing the digestive system the pathway this i have already taught you the food enters the mouth then from mouth to esophagus to esophagus to stomach stomach to small intestine small intestine to large intestine from large intestine to rectum and from rectum to the anus now let us see what happens in the mouth the mouth is the beginning of the digestive tract in fact digestion starts before we even take a bite now confused how can digestion start before taking a bite well, actually, our salivary gland get active as they see and smell pasta, dish or any tempting dish that you want to eat. After you start eating, you chew the, your food into pieces and uh, into more simpler or smaller form, right? Your saliva mix with the food and begins to break it down and form and it breaks it down into a form that the body can absorb and use. When we swallow, our tongue passes the food into the throat and from the throat the food reaches the esophagus right now what is esophagus esophagus is located in our throat near the trachea trachea is your windpipe as esophagus is the food pipe trachea is the windpipe the esophagus receive food from the mouth when you when we swallow it the epiglottis is a small flap that fold over the windpipe as we swallow to prevent <coughs> from choking a series of muscular contraction within the esophagus called peristalsis deliver food to your stomach but first the ring like muscles at the bottom of the esophagus called the lower esophageal sphincter has to relax to let the food in you can see over there no so the lower esophageal sphincter relax so that the food enters your stomach the sphincter then contract and prevent the content of the stomach to come back to the esophagus. Okay, so what happened? First it relaxed, the food enters the stomach, then it contracts so that the food does not enter back into the esophagus. And what happened? If they enter into back into esophagus, sometimes you experience acid burn, no? that uh, heartburn is experienced. What happened when the food uh, enters back into the esophagus that why you feel the burning sensation in your throat and in your chest area okay now next is your stomach now what is the stomach as you can see in the diagram it is a hollow organ or container that holds foods while it is being mixed with the stomach enzyme as you can see the various enzymes are pepsin trypsin gastric amylase gastric lipase now what does pepsin do Pepsin breaks the protein into small peptide, right? So, the cell in the lining of the stomach secretes a strong acid and powerful enzyme that are responsible for the breakdown process. When the content of the stomach are processed enough, then it goes to the small intestine, right? Now, the, what is the small intestine? A small intestine is made up of three segments, the duodenum, the ileum, and the jejunum it is 22 feet long muscular tube that breaks down food using enzyme released from the pancreas and the bile from the liver now i'll be taking about uh, pancreas and biles in the coming video now what happened peristalsis also also work in this organ 
moving the food through the through and mixing it with the digestive juice from the pancreas and the liver the duodenum is the first segment of the intestine it is largely responsible for the continuous breaking down of process the duodenum and the ileum lower of the lower part of the intestine as you can see in the diagram they are responsible for the absorption of nutrient into the blood stream right clear to everyone now uh, the few other organs if you can see in this digestive process is pancreas liver and gallbladder now what does they do the pancreas secretes digestive enzyme into the duodenum that breaks down protein fat and carbohydrate right the pancreas also make insulin passing it directly into the blood stream now insulin is the chief hormone in the body for metabolizing sugar clear the function of pancreas now liver liver has many function but actually his main its main job is in the digestive process what does it do it absorb the nutrient from the small intestine bile from the liver secrete into the small intestine also play an important role in digesting fat and some vitamins the liver is the body's chemical factory it takes the raw material absorbed by the intestine and makes all the various chemicals your body need to function right then the gallbladder what does gallbladder do gallbladder store and concentrate bile from the liver and then release it into the duodenum in the small intestine to help absorb and digest the fat so understood the function of pancreas gallbladder and liver right and then the next part is the after small intestine where does the food which is yes the food which is the large intestine now let us take up the large intestine now next the large intestine it is also known as colon it is responsible for processing waste so that emptying of bowel is easy and convenient it is 6 feet long muscular tube that can connect the small intestine to the rectum now over here you can see the colon is made up of cecum ascending colon descending colon transverse colon and the sigmoid colon it is clear in this picture you can see the ascending colon descending colon cecum and transverse colon and the sigmoid colon now what happens stool or waste left over from the digestive process is passed through the colon by the means of peristalsis first in liquid state and then ultimately in the solid form right as stool is passed through the colon water is removed stool is stored in the sigmoid or the s shape colon until a mass movement occur okay in it normally takes 36 hours for stool to get through the colon the stool itself is food debris and bacteria these good bacteria perform several useful functions such as synthesizing various vitamins processing waste product and food particles and protecting against harmful bacteria when ascending colon becomes full of stool or feces it empties the content into the rectum to be eliminated okay so this is the function of the large intestine or the colon now let us see what is the role of rectum and anus now what is rectum you can see sigmoid colon is connected to the rectum the rectum is a 8 inch chamber that connects the colon to the anus the rectum's job is to receive stool from the colon it let us know that the stool has to be evacuated and hold the stool until evacuation happen when anything comes into the rectum sensor send the messages to the brain it tells the brain and the brain decide if the rectal content has to be released or not right then rectum is connected to the anus or the anal canal now let us see what does the anus do the anus is the last part of the digestive tract it is 2 inch long canal consisting of pelvic floor muscles and the two anal sphincter internal and external the lining of the upper anus is able to detect rectal content it tells us whether the content is liquid solid or gas the anus is surrounded by sphincter muscles that are important in allowing control of the stool right so this is how the uh, the digestive process work this is the whole mechanism of digestion and the function of all the parts i have explained to you today i hope they are clear now one more thing i want to take up today are 
there are some conditions that affect the digestive system. Let us know about them. Now, the basic condition that affect the digestive system is constipation, diarrhea, heartburn, stomach flu, ulcer, and gallstone. Now, let us know what are these. Now, constipation generally happens when you poop less frequently than you normally do. When you are constipated, your poop is often dry, hard, and it's difficult and painful to go out, right? Then the second one is diarrhea. Now, diarrhea is when you have loose and watery poop. Diarrhea can be caused by many things, including bacteria, but sometimes the cause is unknown, being like if you have eaten something wrong, right? So you have loose motions, that is diarrhea, right? Now, the third one is heartburn. Now, if you can see heart, but it is nothing related to your heart. Heartburn is actually a digestive issue. It is an uncontrolled burning feeling in your chest that causes burning sensation in your throat and in your neck. Okay, I have explained to you now when the food goes uh, like it passes to the stomach at times it comes back to your esophagus then you have this kind of sensation. Now the fourth one is stomach flu. It is also known as gastroenteritis. Okay. The stomach flu is an infection of the stomach and upper part of the small intestine, which is caused by a virus. It usually lasts for a week and it is a very common disease these days. Millions of people suffer from stomach flu. Then next is ulcer. Now ulcer is a sore that develops on the lining of the esophagus, stomach and the small intestine. The most common cause of ulcer is infection with the bacteria called Helicobacter pyroli. And also it happens due to you excessive use of anti-inflammatory drug like abrufen, right? And then the last one is the gallstone. It is very common these days. Now it is a small piece of solid material formed from the digestive fluid. Okay. So the solid material which is formed in the gall, gallbladder, it's the gallstone. It is the digestive fluid which is in the form of which, which, may, which forms something solid, right? And it forms in the gallbladder. A small and where, what is the gallbladder? It is a small organ under the liver, right? So these are some kind of common conditions that affects the digestive system. I hope a, the class is uh, the topic which I have taken today is clear to everyone. Okay, and uh, if you all like my video, please do like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more such in interesting videos. Thank you so much.